Ah. Oh, my father. I don't know where I can be fine. I just hope I can see it very early so that I can attend to other things. Where did I keep this fine? This is not it. The file I'm looking for is not here. <laughs> oh. I have to take my time. <laughs> that file is supposed to be here. I'm very sure I'm going to find it. But things are actually happening in this country. And with this file, I'm very, very sure that is it here? Where are these children? Yes, who is there? Please hold on, I'm coming. Yes. Ah. Yes. 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 Ah, yes, yes. Ah, yes, yes. What is that? Yes. Yes, you. Ah. Yes. 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 Ah. Yes. 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 Somebody help. Somebody help me. Somebody. Somebody help me. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, boss. What kind of environment is this? Somebody is dying and calling on his neighbors, and nobody can help the person. Ah! Ah! He has wounded me. Oh! What am I going to do? I can't bear this. Ah! My chest. He has rubbished me. I think I know what to do. I know what to do. Yes. I know what to do. Yeah. Ah, this cannot repeat itself. I am going to call the Savior. I need to invite him into my life. I need to the situation. Ah, yes, yes. Terrible. Chest pains and sicknesses. Troubles everywhere. I can't even bear this. But I'm happy you are here. Now that you are here, I am sure everything is under control. You are welcome to my home. This is my home. This mansion belongs to me. But I'm going to give you a place I'm going to stay. That place, I'm sure. Come, let me take you there. Ah, you see this? This is your room. Feel at home and feel comfortable. This is your bedroom. This is your room. Everything you want is inside this place. If there is anything you are looking for, I cannot find it. Just call on me and I will attend to you. You are welcome once again. 
Yes, stay here, my lord. You are welcome. Uh -huh. The madman can come again. He will know. He will see. Yes. I was looking for something before the enemy struck. I have to get what I'm looking for. Ah. Mm. Uh -uh. See what I was looking for all the while. Yes. Finally. Tani here, Tani here. Who is this? Hold on, I'm coming. Uh uh. Let me drop it. Yes. Let me see that enemy that will come and tr trouble my son once again. It's okay, my son. And who is at the door? Please, you can come in. So the devil, you are the one. So you are the one. So you are the one that have been troubling my son. So you are not afraid to come within this domain to trouble my son. Ah, something is happening here. You are not afraid. Ah. I love what I'm seeing. Now play. Now play. Now play. Now play. I love what I'm seeing. Now I'm not afraid to come here. Now play. Ah ah. Now play. Ah. Ah. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Now play. The 
took everything. You are not afraid. Uh, give me all. Uh, I say, give me all. One. Give, give me everything without exception. Say, give Two. Me all. Uh, Somebody say, is give winning me all. this battle. Say, give me all. I am more than a conqueror. Say, give me all. Three. Uh -uh. This yes. is the last time you cross this domain. Mm. You don't play with my son. Oh. I am a winner in the Lord. Yes. My son. You can see oh. I have over the devil. Oh. Yes. Oh. I can limit him. From today, my son. Yes, my you Lord. You can see that I have no meaning. Yes, my Lord. Lord. Yes, my Lord. Ah. Please have a Thank you, my Lord. I am back again. Thank you. It's good to have you around. Ah ah. And good to have you in charge. Thank you, my son. Ah. Ah. It is nice. Ah. Thank you, my Savior. Ah. Thank you.
such promises satan our father is that i will guide you by my counsel and i'll guide you with my eyes and after all i'll bring you to glory and so our father and our god we are here again to seek your counsel we're here again to seek your direction we're here again so that we can be instructed blessed father thank you because of uh, the the Truth, you have taught us through the drama and through the song. And I want to bless you because of the way you have led us thus far. And the Spirit of God, I'm sure that you continue leading us because your promise is clear. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Lord in heaven, let your eye guide us as you have promised. Let your eyes, the eye of the Lord, guide our footsteps, guide our actions, guide our minds, and reveal to us everlasting Father those things which you know have made our lives that are supposed to be something to be nothing. Those things which has emptied us of our lives and made us to have vacuum inside us. Blessed Father, let them be revealed. Those things, eternal Father, that has made some of us look as good for nothing. When we are made to be good, but it looks like we have hollow inside us. It looks like we are full of emptiness, my Father and my God. All of those things that have prevented us from becoming what we want to be. All of those things that have made us eternal father to become empty. All of those things that the devil has used to evacuate our lives and siphon good things of the Lord. Leaving us empty, leaving us dry, leaving us confused, leaving us a people, great father, that are performing below the capacity built inside them. I ask the spirit of the living God to go ahead, make further revelations. Revelations that will recover. Revelation that we reposition our lives. Revelation eternal father that will recover the people that have become mediocre in their spirit. The people that have settled for nothing. The people that are standing in church. And they are like statues, my father and my God. They don't go back and they don't go forward. My father and my God. That is not what our Christianity is all about. That's not what you have called us to be. Therefore, spirit of the living God. You have promised, I repeat, that thou shalt guide me. You will guide Gideon. You will guide John. You will guide Joseph. You will guide Vitalis. You will guide Charles. You will guide all of us, eternal father, every one of us, with your counsel. And afterward, you receive us to glory. Before you receive us to glory, you bring us into glory. 
Thank you, Father. This moment, as I speak, I'm asking the Spirit of the living God, who is able, who is uh, the teacher of the church, who gives revelation, who is the writer of the Bible, who brings out the mind of God, making it very clear, making it very simple, simplifying the truth that every person will understand. I am asking the same spirit of the living God that brought it upon men who wrote the Bible. Now I want you to hover over our lives so as to reveal things of God, mystery, Satan, and Father. Go ahead and reveal it again so that our lives, blessed Father, can be fixed. I want to thank you once again. In few minutes, blessed Father, make the truth clear to this church again. I want to thank you for what you have done. I want to thank you for what you have taught us. And I want to thank you for what you are going to teach us again. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You may be seated. Now the church of God is a place where you come. After you have given your life to Jesus Christ. After you, after you have been admitted into heaven. After you have become a member of the kingdom of God, the invisible church, you come, and as you come, you are expected to grow, you are expected to be guided, you are expected to be directed. The psalmist said in Psalm 84, verse 7, they go from strength to strength, every one of them appeared in Zion. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, as they behold in a glass, they are what? Changed into his image. And they are changed from glory to glory. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we are encouraged that we should grow in the knowledge of God and growth in the knowledge of God is not a gift growing in the knowledge of God is not what a gift it is a process Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2 verse 40 and verse 42, he grew in favor with God and man. Every growth follows process. Growth is not a gift. Growth is not by miracle. Growth is not a wonder. Growth follows process. That is why a child is born, one day he grows gradually and gradually to one year, to two years, to three years, and all the features, all that have been put inside him are developing. And in growing in faith, you follow the process. And one of those processes is that as you come to church, you are listening to the word of God. You are praying the word into your life. You are following instruction. One of the testifiers came. He said, as he came in here, he had us teaching as he came into Watchman that we should obey, that we should take instruction that we should be guided, that we should be directed. And as he continues to follow that, you'll discover that the sky will be his starting point. And so, you don't, be, you don't become a man of God by miracle. Any person who is become a man of God, and he says by miracle, is a magician. You don't become a great man. You don't get knowledge by miracle. That is why you sent your child 
to kindergarten to nursery school and from nursery school is taught A, B, C, D. A is for apple, B is for ball, C is for cup. And from nursery to primary, from primary to secondary, from secondary to tertiary institution and all that. So here you are. You have given your life to Christ. You have given your life to Christ. You need to grow. And what makes for growth is you become integrated into the church and into the activities of the church. You, you, are, you come to fellowship. You listen to the word of God. You join in prayer. As those who have been in faith are praying, you are listening. And as you are listening, you are learning. In Acts of Apostle, chapter, chapter 2, and we read from verse 40 to verse 47. And when many, and with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. They that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Gladly received the word, the word they received transformed their lives, changed them, and they were what? Integrated into the church. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, apostles' teaching, apostles' instruction, apostles' guidance, Apostles' direction and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in what? Prayers. Can you see what they got themselves involved after they have become members, after they have given their lives to Christ and integrated into the church? They began to follow the process of growth, the process of development, the process of uh, Becoming what God wants them to be. Now, and verse 43, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. They had all things in common. Verse 46, And they continuing daily, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God together, having favor with all people. And the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. And so, as these 3,000 converted souls joined in the fellowship of the brethren, they grew, they grew, they became integrated. Now we have a number of them who joined at, in this first Pentecost experience there, becoming workers, becoming stakeholders, becoming teachers of others, and so on and so forth. Now you have given your life to Christ and you have come to become a watchman. Now there is a need for you to pay attention closely and deeply to God's word. There is a need for you to develop love for God's word. Now listen to me. By February next year, 6th of February, I'll be 40 years in the Lord. But there are people that we got born again maybe at the same time or were even born again before me 
I told us of a person, if you are here, please bear with me. They don't know you and I am not calling your name. I don't even remember your name. I told us of a person who came for counseling. And uh, he came for counseling to me. And as we were talking, he said, I was born again, I think 1975 or 73. Which means he was born again before me now. But as he was talking, I didn't find anything serious in him. The first thing he came up to say is that, that, uh, the, that, that by now, he should have been riding on my jeep. By now, he should have done this. And he should have done that. And everything he was talking about, all of them have to do with this life. And uh, when he finished talking, he didn't even come with Bible as he was coming uh, counseling. And uh, I took him and spoke I spoke hard to him. When I, I told him, you are older than me in the faith. You were born again before me in the faith. But I see emptiness as you are talking. You have lost the experience. When I finished talking to him, he was weeping. After that, I prayed for him. Few months later, he came back to tell me that God has restored him. And those things that he was a uh, pursuing that made him to lose out from the faith. Now, because he has been restored to God's word, now those things began to come into his life. And so here you are, you may be counting years. Now you can count years, and that is years of what? Emptiness. Because you have not followed process. Because you have not followed process. Listen to me. Position, somebody can get position. Position is not possession. Position is not the... Somebody can get position in church. Do you know that position can be gotten through political, through political uh, manipulations in church? Now, but because the person has not sat down on that God's word, there is something very needful. Martha received the, Jesus... Mary received Jesus and uh, John, uh, Lazarus received Jesus, all of them into their house. But the, there was one that was busy jumping up and down. He has no time for, to sit at the feet of Jesus, but one sat at the feet of Jesus and drank from Jesus and was taught by Jesus and uh, the one that was jumping up and down, buying of puff, eating and distributing, running up and down, only for what enters into their mouth. And you know that what goes into your mouth goes out into, through the annals. Now, the one that sat at the feet of Jesus now was taking all the world at the end. In the midst of what was happening, now... Uh, this one that has distracted herself came to Jesus and said, I don't you care that my sister has left me serving. And Jesus said to her, Matter, matter, you are cumbered about what? Many things. One thing is what? Needful. And Mary has what? Taking this thing that is needful, which you must not take away from her. And so, as you come to meetings like this, you should be able to separate between the needful and distraction. If you are not able to discover what is needful to you, what you need, you will get yourself distracted. And may I inform you that the word of God is the bottom line. You need God's word. And so I'm taking you again to the Bible and the Bible. Songwriters say a number of things about the Bible. Let me read some of those things that they say concerning Bible before I go to show the, the few re remaining causes of, uh, of limitations. Few of them so that we can close for today and then you eat your food and go and rest and come back tomorrow morning for 
another dance from heaven. There is going to be the angels will dance here tomorrow morning. You saw what happened when the result will be coming. You will know that, that it is God at work. You will know that we don't entertain. We are not entertainers like our father in the Lord said. You will know that we are not speaking as orators. Listen to me. I used to be an assuming man. I used to be very shy. I remember a young girl of about 14 years. I met somewhere. I met somewhere in Holland. And the girl was looking at my face and was saying, I'm shy. But the way she was looking at my face, I said, you are shy and you are looking like me like this. I used to be a very shy person. I've told us that before, that my first preaching that I met, I wear goggle, I wear kupa, I, to close my eye because I wouldn't want, because of being very shy. I was, if I go to fellowship, I will, will put on Cooper. You know, in those days, the Cooper was, uh, was uh, the reigning thing. You remember? Some of you were not born then. Oh, 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 that. Cooper. I, I'll just put it to cover my eye. And people will not know that I'm covering my being ashamed to look at people. Because I was very shy. But as I came into the faith, the Lord began to walk and walk and walk. I began and take me through the school of the word of God. And process by uh, precept by precept, line upon line, step by step, step by step. As I follow the word of God, first being born again, go for sanctification, go for assurance, go for 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 a holy ghost baptism and keep on reading the word studying it stuffing myself praying the word inside me and fasting exposing my life to spiritual exercise with an intense and unquenchable desire to know more as i continue till today are you listening and so but there are people that we got born again at the same time near 40 years ago. If you see them, that you will not know that this person that this person was born again near 40 years ago. He's still looking for people to pray for him. He's still looking for people to because of not growing. Now listen to me. I've told this that before. People who taught me after I gave my life to Jesus. People who baptized me, people who pastored me, people who led me. Now, sometimes when we come and I'm listening to them and they are talking to me, I see shallowness, I see emptiness, I see, I see people saying things that cannot make real sense and meaning. And that was because they did not follow the process and they did not continue. If you continue in, pro, in your after giving your life to Jesus, you continue to follow the process. You will continue to grow until you become a person that when you open your mouth, truth will come out. When, 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 when you come around people, they know that somebody that has substance has come around. Somebody that has substance. Somebody that has passed through school of the Holy Spirit. Through school of the Lord. And so... I read for you from these songs before I quickly go to the, the few of those courses of uh, courses of, uh, of limitations. Now the songwriter in song number 43 said, Give me the Bible, stars of gladness cleaning, to share the wanderer, lone, and tempest stars. No storm can hide that radiant, peaceful beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, 
Thy light shall guide me in the world narrow way. Precept and, pre and promise. Law and love combining. The night shall vanish in eternal death. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken. When sin and grief has filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold up faith lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible. All my steps enlighten. Teach me the danger of these realms below. That lamp of safety over the gloom shall brighten. That light alone, that part of peace can show. There is the light that can only show part of this, of, of uh, part of uh, peace. And that is the light that is thrown by God's word. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal. Hold up the splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. Show me the glory gilding Jordan way. That's wonderful. That is great. And for me, that is great. And then song number 46. Cling to the Bible. Though all else be taken, lose not its precepts so precious and pure. He said, cling to the Bible. Don't lose its precepts. Souls that are sleeping, its tidings awaken. Life from the dead in its promises sure. Cling to the Bible. Cling to the Bible. Cling to the Bible, our lamp and our guide. Cling to the Bible. This jewel and treasure brings life eternal and saves the fallen man. Surely its value no man can measure. Seek for its blessing, O soul, while you can. Lamp for the feet that in by ways have wandered. That's the Bible. Guide for the youth that will otherwise fall. Hope for the sinner whose life has been squandered and shattered. Star for the aged and best book for all. What's that best book for all? The Bible. And so how often do you pick your Bible? Now, in song number 47, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light on my path always to guide and to save me from sin and show me the heavenly way. And so, I want you, after we have finished this section now, as you get back to your house, to your, the hotel, hostel, take this songbook, sing hymn number 43, 46, and 47, and meditate on the message of this hymn. Is that understood? Now, with that, I go to complete the section we started in the evening about the causes of uh, limitations, the causes of limit. I've shown you seven of them. I began with sin and the things that accompany, the things that surround sin. After that, we saw the, that the limitations through unwillingness to yield and to surrender fully and totally to God. We saw number three that Satan can equally use your past, past of your parents to limit your life. Number four, we saw that you can be limited by opinion of others and uh, you can be limited by following the crowd, dancing to the tune of the crowd. And then number five, we can be limited by fear, by the spirit of timidity. And number six, we saw that unscriptural and poor self-assessment, unscriptural mind is also another cause even a very strong cause of uh, uh, limitations in life. And then 
We saw number seven. When you lack knowledge, when you are ignorant, when you lack direction in life, that surely your life will be limited. A life that is not purpose driving, a life that is goalless, a life that is without target, surely will not excel. That was where we stopped. Now we have a number of them further to look at, and that is number eight. So you can put down number eight. Now, the number eight limiting factor of force is a cause. C U R S E. Cause. When there is a cause on your head, when there is a cause on your family, when there is a cause at the place where you are operating, when you are selling what you are selling, and the shop you are selling has been placed under a cause. When you are living in the compound, and that compound where you are living has been cursed, now that can limit your life. Now what is a cause? A cause is a statement of evil invoked upon someone as a result of sin or evil. Example of a cause. When Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed the ground. God caused serpent. The ground was caused, and that cause limited the productivity of the ground. After the cause came upon the ground, the ground began to, to what? produce tons and tasters. Are you with me? In Genesis 49, the man Reuben had already violated his father's bed and in the day of blessing his children jacob gathered all his children he looked at reuben he said reuben you are my firstborn the excellency of my strength everything about me should have enjoyed but now because of what you have done you are unstable as waters thou shall not excel he put a bar over his life and it was only when moses in, in, in Deuteronomy, I think chapter 33 or 32, now be called the children of Israel that it was able to reverse that cause. Therefore, cause is a limiting factor upon people's life, upon people's destiny, upon people's progress, both in Christian life, in Christian life, and in every other area of their life. We saw yesterday a, a man by name Coniah in Jeremiah 22 who the word of God pronounced a man that shall die barren. A man that nobody from his family sh should excel. We saw that, and then and we saw how the city of Jericho was placed under a curse, and that curse limited their productivity. We saw also how bringing in a costing into the camp of Israel led them to losing battle. Therefore, any form of curse, either placed on you, or you carry a costing into your life, or you are living in a cost place, or whichever means that cost came into your life, you served a man who cost who is who cost that anybody that must steal my money must die poor man, anybody that must take my money from the bank and then and save it and then and steal it. And then I begin to use it for thread. Whatever is threatened by the, in the spiritual way, I will be collecting it. And then and you happen to fall into that trap. And now you stole your organ money, your master's money, when you were doing apprentice. And you started business. Now after you rise and rise and rise, you come down. Every night you find yourself sleeping. And you are still serving your master. 
Are there not people that served people and they were freed year 2000, but are still dreaming where they are still in the house of their, their organ servant? You say your guy is a cultic man. Now, how did that occultism work in your life? Is it not because you carry some accustomed? He used 200,000 to settle you, but you have settled yourself already with stolen 2 million. And that 2 million is what has kept you where you are. Until you make it right, you can't go further. You can't go beyond. You can't go beyond because there is what? An accustomed. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord said, there is an accustomed. Until it is taken away from you, I will not identify with you. So I want you to look at your life. Examine your life very well to know whether you are operating under a cause. And now, one who is operating under a cause cannot operate in his full capacity. Unfaithfulness and ties and pain, ties payment, and attending to the things of God can equally produce a cause in Malachi chapter 3. He said, you are caused. You whole nation, you are caused. How can a man excel who is under a cause? He said, you have robbed me, all your whole nation. Say, where have you robbed? We robbed you. In tithes and what? Offering. And so, that not paying your tithe and your offerings appropriate can bring you under what? A cause. Now, we come to number nine. What is number nine cause of limitation? That is evil covenants and violations of covenants. Number eight, what's number eight? Cause. And number nine, evil covenants and what? Violation of a covenant. Covenant. Now, what's a covenant? Covenant is an agreement between two persons. If your grandfather or you have entered a covenant with somebody or covenant with the devil, covenant, blood covenant, you enter covenant with a person, a man. He opened, you, he brings, he brought his hand and cut it and give you to lick his blood. You, brought, you, you cut your own I give you to leak, and you leak. We must marry ourselves. You have entered what? Evil covenant. And that covenant is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Some young boys and young girls are carried away. And they got into things that are destructive. Things that their, their father that is on earth for 70 years is afraid to do. Things that angels are afraid to do. These young boys and young girls are not afraid to get into those kind of a time. And, and so, you need to look at your life. What covenant have you made? You enter into, into court. All of those courts in school, you know that even it remains for nursery school children to enter into court. Primary school, court. If you go to, to that Jabi, Jabi, down Jabi, court. You go to this Dakibunia, court. You go to Maraba, Maraba is the headquarter of court. Iriri kind of court, different type of courts. You go to Masaka, court. Go to Karimo, everywhere, court. School boys, they saw. They saw the address and put and put pockets inside. You see, as I'm wearing a knife, pocket is inside, and they will put knife inside it. And they go and enter and take some oath. Take oath. Say this, say this, say that, say that. And they begin to say all of those things. After they said all of those things, they have given out their souls to the devil. You can't eat your cake and have it back. The devil is like monkey. When you carry your cup to give monkey water, 
He will collect the cup. But for you to take the cup back, that's where there is trouble. Is it, it is easy to, to, to play into the hands of the devil, to enter into covenant, to enter into this with a boy, with a girl. You go into internet, they say, please click this so, so, so you click. So that somebody will tell you, somebody will give you prophecy. Somebody will tell you about your future. Somebody will tell you whether you belong to Leo or, 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 or Capricorn or all of those kind of a thing. Somebody can read your palm and all that. And you go and do that and you get initiated. You have entered into a covenant and that covenant is on the head of that person. Now, that is one way of word. Being, your life being messed up, your life being limited. Another way inside that one is violation of word. Covenants, even good covenants. You have made covenant with the Lord. And then I let I violated it. You have made covenant with the Lord. Ah, uh, in your zeal. In your zeal, you have told the Lord that any day I didn't read 30 chapters of the Bible. 30 chapters of the Bible. No food. And God has recorded it. But now you have violated it. You don't even read one chapter and you think it doesn't matter. No, you are mouth. Go and read Ecclesiastes chapter 5. You have made a vow, the word has come out from your mouth, and uh, you have entered. All of those covenants, you kneel down. Lord, if you do this for me, this is what I'm going to do, and this is what I'm going to do, and this and that, you promise the Lord. And uh, you come here and sing, I'm a watchman. I will hold on my post till we meet in the city of God. And then we say, and we say, everybody raise up your hand. Say, I'm a watchman. I'm a watchman. I will die a watchman. I will die a watchman. And uh, tomorrow, somebody has offended you. You, you, you didn't remember the, 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 the covenant and the vow you have made. And then, and you shaken out. Well, after you finish cleaning out, you need to go and settle the covenant you have already made and entered with your mouth. So, be careful about what you say. You know in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel and chapter 21, 1 to 9, in, the, in, in David's time of regime, David noticed that strange things were happening in the kingdom. And David wanted to find out what was behind what was happening. And it was discovered that Saul, in his zeal, had gone to kill a people that Joshua entered into covenant with. And killing that made Israel to enter into what? Famine that refused to be to abet. The only time that I turned for it is that those men came up, the, the Gibeonites, and said, the man who killed us, you must give us what? Seven heads of the, of the children of this man for us to be appeased. And David went looking for the head, seven heads from sons of Saul and cut them off and carried to the Gibeonites before rain came back in the land. Do you see the danger of violation of a covenant? Covenants. Covenants fathers have made. Covenants fathers have entered on your behalf. Covenants they have made. When they are looking for a male child, when they are looking for a female child, and they come and make the covenant. When they have look, look, they are looking for children. That's why you can come to a family and you find that they have 20 hefty, hefty men, like I said yesterday. And out of those 20 hefty men, they are good for what? Nothing. Because the man has entered into a covenant, saying in his promise, maybe grandfather, that I want children. And the man said, What about? money you want children if you get 
children, you will not get money. If you get money, you will not get children. That's why you can find places they have money, but no children. They have children, but there is no money because there is existing covenant. Are you listening? First Samuel chapter 20, second Samuel chapter 21. Then there was a famine in verse 1 in the days of David, three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered it is for Saul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn that entered into covenant unto them and saw sought to slay them in his zeal to children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewithal where shall I make the atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver, nor gold of Saul, of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us that shall thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What, what ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man that consumed us and devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in of the coast of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I'll give them. And that was done. It was after that that rain returned in the land. Do you see what restricted them? Do you see what limited them? Are you listening? And so, that is about that. Now, when you eat in dream and climb walls in dream, climb mountains, having sexual intercourse in dream, swimming in dream, meeting dead ends, and sometimes you meet cobwebs or other bad dreams, all of them are symbols of world limitation. Near success syndrome, hatred anywhere you turn to, inability in Christian life, you are in instability in Christian living. Instability in marriage, waywardness of children or personal waywardness, negative life experiences, wherever you turn to, all of them are signs of world limitation. Are you listening? Where others go, you go there, you don't get anything. Anywhere you do somebody good, the next thing you get is what? You are paired back with evil. There is nothing you do that will be good. Something is making it to be. And that is because there is a cause. There is a covenant. There is a limitation. Now, number 10. Cause of limitation is negative comments of people. Negative comments. Negative comments. When people make negative comments about you, when you make negative comments about your children, those negative comments have power to register in the mind of that child. Look at you. You cannot do anything. Look at this one. You are older than. Look at this person. Look at this person. You are just empty head. You are just this. All those words are what? registering in the mind of that child and the child as the child grows we continue to struggle with those negative things that have been said about that child you too also what may be limiting you is negative things people have said about you that registered in your mind and now you are struggling with it anytime you want to move forward you remember that this is what is said about you and that thing has registered in your mind and uh, you are forced to believe it. That is why we must select words we use when we are talking to our children. In Nehemiah chapter 4, the people came in verse 1 and said, what will these feeble Jews do? They look at them and call them what? 
feeble Jews, empty Jews, do for nothing Jews, good for nothing Jews, white elephant Jews, but they refused to accept what was said. That was why they excelled. They did not accept that comment. They didn't accept that comment. Now, the number 11 is, number 11 cause of limitation is the spirit of limitation, the demon of limitation. Zechariah chapter 3. Let's look at Zechariah. Something was coming from heaven. Something was due for Zechariah. Something was to be given to Zechariah. Or, or, or Joshua rather, not Zechariah, Joshua. Joshua the high priest. Something was to be given to him. A crown. A mitre was to be fixed on his head. But there was a demon of resistance. And that demon could resist him because there was some cleanness. There was sin in his life. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. He showed me Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord that was sent to minister to him. Angel of the Lord that was delegated to help him. Before the angel of the Lord, and stand, Satan standing at his right hand to resist him, to limit him, to restrain him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem, rebuked thee, is, it, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from thee. I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by him. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, if thou wilt keep my charge, then you will also judge my house and shall also keep my course, and I will give thee place to walk upon these that stand by. After the sin that met the, 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 the resistor, the devil that came to resist him to have power, when the devil finds sin in your life, they will resist you. When the covenant of your fathers finds sin in your life, you be resisted. When the devil finds anything that belongs to him in your life, he'll be able to resist you. The devil was able, the demon was able to resist Joshua the high priest because there was a dirty garment he was putting on. And then before he could make progress, before he could break that limit, the garment was taken away from him before the mitre came upon his head. And so you have to look at your life. You have to look deeply into your life. What you are, your lifestyle could be, what has made the demons of resistance, the, the spirit of resistance to be resisting your life. And in Daniel chapter 10, there was a, there was a Prayer that Daniel prayed and fasted for 21 days. And then an angel was sent to come and deliver him a blessing. But that angel was well led by the prince of Persia. That prince of Persia was a resistor. He was a demon that would not want these people that have been in captivity to be freed. Because the message coming from heaven. It's a message that we bring what freedom and liberty, and therefore, while the while while Mike, while Gabriel, I think Gabriel or Michael, one of the angels were coming. The Bible didn't mention the name coming. Now it was well led, but Michael, the archangel, came to help him, and so he find that that there can be a, a resistance from 
spirit of limitation, demon, and all that. Paul in Romans chapter 15, verse 22, uh, talk about how the devil resisted him. He had in mind to make visit to God's people, but he was hindered. Verse 22 of Romans 15. For which cause also I have much I have been much hindered from coming to you. And if you read First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. First Thessalonians 2 18. Desire to visit the people, but he was hindered. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once again, but Satan did what? Hindered us. So there is Satan there to hinder, and we must not forget that he is there to hinder. And in Zechariah chapter 1, 17 to 21, we see also the hindrance that came as a result of the spirit that was hovering over the people at that time. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 18. Verse 8 rather. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 8. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now look up, occultic people, magician. You had the testimony of one of the sisters, a man, an entity, a man that tried to be, play a deity, an entity in her community, holding every person down. Listen to me. Somebody can hold a whole community down. Somebody can hold a whole family down. That nobody can lift up his head. It is only me and my children and then and using occultism to deal with the community when such a person dies the community will see light in the day that Uzziah died Isaiah saw the Lord so think about that think about that think about that in your father's compound only the children of so so uh, woman is doing fine. The rest of the people are all beggars. The children of the woman, uh, first son, second son, all of them doing well. But this other one, nobody is doing well. Nobody, everybody is a beggar. And uh, if you look deeply, it could be that this other person is into occultism. And is using occultic forces and power to cage everybody. Cage everybody in the family, everybody in the community, everybody in the house. Only him lifting up his head and his family doing fine. That is a possibility. Now, in the days of Moses, the, 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 the magicians that were doing all those things that Moses was Moses dropped their rod and they dropped their own and this and that. Genes, genes and what? Jambres. They resisted Moses. They were resisting Moses. Now, what were those people doing? They were using magical power, occultic power, to make sure that Israel did not leave Egypt. They were make, using occultic power. So occultic power can be used. That is why you need to engage in spiritual warfare. That is why you need to be prayerful. That is why all this eating and eating and running for eating, is it eating you have come to eat? Do you know that somebody can come to this meeting and say, I'm not going to eat anything. He's going to go fasting because he wants to break out. He wants to break out from captivity. He wants to see a change. But you were here last year, running after food, and this and that. You were again running after food. When are you going to sit up to attack the things that are attacking you? When are you going to sit up to know that there is a hindrance, that you are not performing to your capacity? 
When are you going to sit up to know that all is not well? When are you going to sit up to know that what is happening with you is not ordinary? When are you going to sit up to know that there is something behind you are set back and set back of your children and members of your family? When are you going to wake up to address these things? What time is better than this time? Is it not this time, this meeting is a better period for you to address those things and recover your destiny and recover your life and recover your family and recover what's supposed to be recovered? Why are you taking what you should take serious, not serious? And so we find that, that this limiting spirit, these demonic spirits, they are responsible for lo locking down the potentials of people. And, and they are responsible for making some children who are supposed to be high flyers to become irresponsible drug addicts. They are responsible for attacking people in dream. They are responsible for attacking marriages. They are responsible for attacking peace of people. They are responsible for destroying homes and destroying people and also responsible for depressing people they put restrictions and resist and resistance in every effort people make to make progress and so when you know and see where you belong to and what you should be or attain in life but you find it difficult to experience or to get there you are operating on that spirit of limitation you are being restricted you are being limited and therefore you need to rise you need to rise to the challenge you don't need to live as if there is nothing wrong you don't need to to brush it under the carpet look at the family where you come from look at your brothers look at your sisters Look at your life. Look at how many years you have spent in Abuja here. Look at third contracts. Look at many opportunities that come your way. And that they never worked out. For somebody to write work for 12 times is not ordinary. It's not ordinary. For a child of 16 years to still be in primary two, <laughs> something is wrong. For a boy of 20 years to be doing to be doing JS2, and in that JS JS2, he's not even he doesn't even know how to write his name. You think it's ordinary? You know, Mary, something is behind it. The mother, the father must rise. They must what? Rise. To battle the force, to battle the powers, to confront the powers with the name of Jesus, with the things we have been taught. And so, whatever the case may be, whatever may be the case, we can break through. We can go beyond. We can bust the bond. That is what we saw in Jeremiah chapter 5. We can, we can break the limit. After all, Zacchaeus was able to break the limiting force by climbing. Nothing is or can be beyond your reach. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 11 to 13. And that brings us to number 12. And what is number 12? Cause of limitation. What you believe. Your belief system. Number 12. Your belief system, what you believe, what you believe is very, very important. If you believe wrongly, you cannot go beyond what you believe. If you believe rightly, if you believe that, if you believe that the, the days of miracles are over, like Jehovah Witnesses, will you get miracles? Look at the sister that was delivered, from, I think from Jehovah Witness. And now she came in and she testified. That is because she believed. 
Now, Jehovah Witness people, they don't believe in miracle. But now look at the one that has been delivered and she's not enjoying miracle and yet will enjoy more. All of those Jehovah Witnesses, if they believe in miracle, they could have gotten miracle. At least miracle of salvation. So your belief system is very important. What you believe. That's number number what? Number 12. What you believe. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 5, what Naaman believed almost robbed him of his healing. In Mark chapter 7, 1 to 13, and Matthew chapter 15, 1 to 9, the traditions of the people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, were victims of their belief system. The traditions and what they believe held them limited, obstructed their life, robbed them of the blessing that Christ came to offer them. And Jesus said, if you will not believe that I'm him, you will die in your world, sin. So check what you believe. Some people believe that there are no more miracles. Others believe that nobody can be free from sin totally. What you believe is a factor that determines what happens in your life. No person can exceed what he believes. One belief system is a very important factor that determines the height you will reach in life, that will determines what you are going to be in life, that, will de that determines what you will get in anything you do. So what you believe about God is where you will aspire to get to in life. The people say we are like grasshoppers in our own sight, and they couldn't go beyond grasshoppers. The people say of Goliath that this man has come to defy us, and that was what happened to them. You cannot go beyond what you expect in life. And you cannot receive from God beyond what you can believe. Yes. Do you hear that? You cannot re be receive beyond what you can believe. You don't believe that you get here. You will not be here. You don't believe that, uh, that uh, you don't believe that you are going to get children. You will not get. You don't believe that all will be well. All will not be well. You are sick and you don't believe that God can heal you. You only believe in mercy. Since we are not giving people mercy here, then this is not for you. At the end of the meeting, you, you go to where they will give you mercy because that's what you believe. You don't believe that prayer can change your life. Say so these people, every time prayer, 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 prayer. Well, you call prayer, prayer. Will it work for you? It will not work for you. But there are people here that prayers have worked. It's working for me. And so, what you believe is important. Have you noted that? Have you noted that? So note it down. Because you cannot be, you cannot be better than what you believe. You cannot go higher than what you believe. Now, believing the right, if you must believe right, it begins with thinking right thought about God. If you cannot think right thought about God, if you see God as incapacitated, if you see what we are doing as wasting your time, we will have already, in fact, if you see what we are doing as wasting your time, you will have wasted your time. If you see what we are doing as uh, entertainment, that is why it will end. If you see what we are doing as drama, what kind of drama is he playing? It is going to be drama to you. But some other person that believes that this is the hand of God at work, we see God's hand at work in the person's life. And so that is that. Number 13. Number 13. We cannot take note number 13 cause of uh, the number 13 cause of uh, limitation is spiritual attacks by the enemy. Yes, spiritual attacks. Human beings, human beings can bring medicine in your father's compound. Now listen to me. I, every now and then, I, I, they tell me in the village that they are dropping some, some charm, throwing some charm near my little house. They are dropping charms there. And I laugh because you cannot do medicine to medicine. You cannot do sham to sham. 
I am charm. I am medicine. If any person does that, that listen to me, I was talking with a brother. And he said, he said, he told me, he told somebody that, look, if what you are suffering is back to sender, that if what you are suffering is back to sender, that nobody can help you. You know what he meant by back to sender? Somebody has said something against you. And now you say in the name of Jesus, go back to the person who sent you. He said, nobody can help the person. So all of those people that are bringing things into my house, if they become sick, nobody will help them because it is what? Back to sender. So they can use charm to limit your life if you are a person of, that is uh, so empty, so light, so careless and, uh, and all that. So we cannot overlook the fact that there are spiritual attacks by the enemy to ensure that nothing meaningful comes out of people. Nothing meaningful works in your life. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. But, but there is one who comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. Isaiah chapter 49, 24 to 26 talks about the captive of the mighty and the, the prayer of the mighty. Shall they be delivered? The answer is that they can be what? Delivered. And so, Satan can fight you from within. He can also fight you from without. And finally, number 14. There is also the limitation caused by lack of appreciation lack of gratitude to God your life can be limited when you are always you are always complaining you are always you will never see anything good that God has done for you you know the children of Israel the final thing that God this met, met God to say these people you are going to go around and go around and go around and die in the wilderness. We're not, and we're not enter into the promised land. And they continue walking around and around and around and around their miracle. Going around and going around and ended all of them in the wilderness was that God said, for these ten times they have all seen my miracles and they have not believed me. The ten lepers that Jesus cured after, after he has taught them, only one came back to appreciate. And that was the one that got a perfect healing. And so think about your life. Do you appreciate the things God is doing? Do you appreciate the work of God? Do you talk about it? And so it follows that all of us must learn to be gracious to God. We must learn to be grateful to God. We must learn to be grateful to God. And grateful to the vessels of God. Vessels that God has been using in the parishes, in the places to minister to our lives. Did you hear my point? In the parishes, in the places, God is using people to minister to you. had the testimony of the sister from uh, one man village. And uh, I know that. One man village. I don't know how they call a village one man village. But she came from that one man village. Now, and the how their pastor, uh, every now and then, at the end of every year, they will come together for a thanksgiving, uh, whatever, whatever, to appreciate God and all that. That since he became a pastor, he has not had the cause to carry people to bury. The, this is uh, appreciation. You can see how that has been working. And therefore, God should be appreciated and those instruments that God is using in the localities to minister to your life, to teach the Bible discourse, to teach the Sunday light, to teach the Bible study, to give you the charismatic hour that they are given to, you should appreciate them. You should be grateful to them. You should not be fighting them. 
You should not be what? Fighting them. Fighting those that God is using to minister to you will limit your life. Aaron and Miriam died. Miriam suffered leprosy. Aaron later died. And why did he die? He opposed Moses. Numbers chapter 16. Korah, Datan, and Abiram would have been among those to enter into the promised land, but they died because they rose up opposition against the instrument that God used to bring them out, an instrument that God used to feed them. Therefore, if you rise and your, your own is to organize people against your pastor, your own, you are an organizer, ringleader against your pastor, against your pastor's wife. He didn't do this one. He didn't do that one. The children didn't do this one. They didn't do that one. And all that and all that. But you will not see the one you didn't do. You will not see the one you didn't do. It is the one that they have not done. And you, you will not see that this man will fast some days and will do vigils and make prayers for you and all that. You will not see that. What you pay him back is with what? Criticism. There are people that have PhD in criticism. Criticize everybody, criticize preaching, criticize talk, make negative comments about their leaders. That can attract problem to your life. That can bring your life to limitation. It limited Korah, Datan, and Abiram. They were given position, but they did not appreciate their position. Now, going against your leader was what made the name of Joab, who was was one of the generals but every now and then he attacking david he's talking to david as if david was his mate and the holy spirit technically removed his name when the list of the 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 mighty men of david was written may the lord not allow you to be like joab and so what have you gained number one this this section I've shown you number one in this section. Number one in this section. I showed you number one that cause, cause brings a, a limitation. And number two, evil covenants and violation of covenants. Number three, allowing negative comments of people. Uh, or making negative comments uh, uh, on your children that that can set limitations in their mind. Number four, demonic attack. Demon, spirit of limitation. Number five, what's number five? What you believe. Your belief system. Number six. Spiritual attacks by the enemy. And number seven. Lack of appreciation. Ask me to mark you. I mark you very good. Let's rise on our feet and let us pray. You are a good student. And I'm a good teacher. Let's rise on our feet and let us pray. Lift up your voice and let's talk to the Lord. Let's pray. Thank the Lord. And then you have known what you are going to direct your warfare against. You are going to war against the causes. You are going to war against evil covenants and, and war against whatever that anybody has violated. Anybody has violated that is now violating your time and your life. Negative comments and uh, spirits of limitation and uh, belief system, what you believe that is uh, not proper and, uh, and the spiritual attacks against your family, against your children and lack of appreciation. Our Father, we thank you because of what you have taught us. What a great time with God. What an inspiration. What an insight. We lift up, we, we, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor for not leaving us ignorance, for not leaving us in doubt and leaving us in darkness. Our Father, we thank you. Thank you for the knowledge you have sold. We will walk with it. We will fight with it. We will make a good warfare with the information. Information for transformation. Information everlasting, Father. You have armed us. You have equipped us. Blessed Father, we will go a warfare. 
we will retrieve our, our destiny. We will make it to the top. We will excel in life. Our children will excel. Every member of this church will excel. Our families will excel. We will break the bound. We will hit the, we will go beyond the limit. Our Father and our God, the causes of the enemy cannot limit us. We thank you. Can I hear you talk to God? Can I hear you talk to God? On behalf of your children, some people, every firstborn, every firstborn of a man in the family don't do well. And I happen to come from such family. But I have decided my firstborn must do well and must succeed. Yes, lift up your voice. And every firstborn that are born after me in our father's compound, I have decreed that they must do well. Whatever is limiting the firstborn in my family cannot limit them. Lift up your voice and let's, let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Talk to God for yourself. Talk to God. Talk to God. Thank you, our Father. Break all the curses. Break all the curses. You have what it takes to break the curses. The name of Jesus can break the curse. You have what it takes to violate whatever that is violating your life. You have what it takes to demolish the spirit of limitation. You have what it takes to destroy every belief system working against your life. You have what it takes. You have what it takes to go against every spiritual attack, attacking your life, attacking your business, attacking whatsoever you are pursuing. You have the grace of God to receive this gracious spirit so that you begin to appreciate God and servants of God is using to minister to your life. Thank you, Father, for answer. 